Woohoo! Got the old power unit. Hell yeah. That is awesome. This is gonna be a great little project. <laughs> What is up guys? Welcome back to Garage Mods, day number three. Today is gonna be the day that we are gonna be setting up, whoop, where'd it go? This guy right here. I even got my buddy Dave to help. If you're a super guy, you obviously know that you need a buddy Dave. Trevor knows what I'm talking about. So uh, probably gonna throw you guys on time lapse and give you a few tips and tricks as I go along here. Um, but it's probably gonna be a lot more time lapsey than some of my other videos. So sorry in advance. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of work to do and not a whole lot of time to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. Pro tip, first thing we're gonna be talking about here, uh, this guy either goes on your kind of passenger side front fender or it's gonna go on the passenger side rear fender. Um, it can only go in one of those two spots just because it needs to be close to the lift cylinder, basically the forward part of this thing. So we're gonna put this over there and then that is eventually gonna go and plop, just kind of slide right into place there. All right, so as you guys saw, it's way easier to do with two people, obviously. Um, if you go and take the two posts, flop them down on the ground, you can actually go and slide these rails in. One quick thing, these little windows right here need to be on the same side as what your power post is, and on the same side where your lift cylinder is gonna go right over here. On the other side, we got these larger windows, and according to directions, that's where it's supposed to go, so that's where we're putting them. Pretty much, we just gotta make sure we get both of them. Now real quick, can you explain to the uh, to the viewers here what we wound up doing to get this in? Yeah, so essentially when we were trying to shove it in, uh, we had lodged it between the end of the plastic bushing and the Stuck inside right down in here. of the frame. Yeah. So we just had to unwedge it. You kind of press towards the middle and it caused it to bow a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that was enough just to slide it into place. Cool. Awesome. But yeah, make sure you get you got grooves like this. I don't know how you can see this. Uh, both on the top and the bottom. So what he's talking about is we had to we had to go and get it down it into this bottom one here. Uh, it was giving us a little difficulty, but he got it working. Thanks, Dave. Yes, sir. All right, so these right here are gonna be our top plates. Uh, once you go and get the locking bars installed, basically what you're gonna do is just slide these in place. This is gonna be where the bolt goes with the locking with the uh, locking bar on it, and this one is gonna be for cable later on. So uh, Dave's back here doing his first one. I'm gonna go get my little self a step stool because I'm only 5'9 and I can't reach. Um, yeah, oh, other thing, if you order one of the Benpack HD9s, these are gonna be in the same package as your wheel stops. So if you're uh, looking around for them, can't find them, check your wheel stops. We're trying to do now. Uh, what we got is the on the back side of the ladders. There you go. On the back side of the ladders, there is a bolt hole right here, and this little spacer needs to go basically between the uh, the ladder and the post here. So, trying to squish this in here, um, and then we'll go ahead and get it tightened up and move on to the next step. If you look at these instructions right here, it says you're supposed to go and remove these pulleys. 
Uh, there's a double set right here and a single one down here, except they send you this big old box that weighs like 40 pounds by itself. And we got the double, we got the single, we got the bolts. So it's already done. All right guys, so we got our bolts all in right here. Um, this is the adjustable one, so if I need to, I can actually go and take the two bolts out of there and just slide it over if I needed like a little bit more uh, narrow track width. For you to start on the widest one, it's only four bolts, so if I need to go and switch it over later, it's not a big deal. Um, we also went ahead and got this little uh, bulkhead hose tube thing right up over here, and we mounted this. We did skip a couple steps, so sorry about that. Also, if you look right in here, there's this little rubber piece. Whenever you go to put this on, I recommend just taking the bolts and putting it through here and then attach them to the rubber piece because otherwise trying to hold this um, without your buddy Dave holding it for you, yeah. it's gonna be impossible, especially if you're trying to go and put it through that rubber bit as well in order to go and get attached to that plate. All right, up next we got cables. Uh, we're gonna be sorting them because there's four different lengths. Um, once we do that, we're gonna start threading them on, threading them through, and I will keep you guys updated with that and show you all kind of how we do that and which one goes where. All right, so I have no idea what this equates to in feet, but uh, we got the cables all laid out here. This is basically longest to shortest. Uh, I got 8,706 millimeters all the way down to 2,958, so. All right guys, Dave's gotta go. Thank you so much for helping me out, dude. Hey, I cannot tell you how much buddy. I appreciate it, seriously. Anytime. This thing weighs like a million long. tons. Dave's rolling. I'm gonna hang, head over to the uh, parts store and get some uh, ATF so we can actually go and fill up the reservoir. Um, as well as another air filler upper thingy because I can't find mine, which means I can't extend a cylinder. So I'm gonna go grab one of those and uh, I'll be back here in a little bit. All right guys, so I swung out and got four gallons of ATF. Uh, this particular lift cylinder calls for, I think it's 3.6 gallons or something. So I just went ahead and got four. Uh, I also went out and got my handy dandy little uh, Harbor Freight spray nozzle here. Uh, so we can go ahead and get the lift cylinder opened up. Before we do that though, I did want to go and touch on cable lengths. There are obviously four different lifting cables. All right, we got the HD9 lift. And as you can see, each length of cable corresponds to a different letter. And then if you scroll down another page or two, you actually see how uh, each of the cables goes and gets routed. What I went ahead and did, obviously we got our lift station right over here. I just went ahead and put each cable length in its respective corner for where it's gonna go. Next thing we're gonna do, I need to fire up my air compressor and then we're gonna go and put air uh, on the return line of this so we can go and extend this hydraulic ram all the way out. Cables are gonna routed. I'll show you guys that here in a little bit, but we need to go and pull this off because this is actually the uh, retaining plate to the top of the power cylinder. You got your post right here with the uh, lift motor and whatever else on it. Right down here is the line, uh, or sorry, rather the, uh, the plug that we need to go and pull out. This is an eight millimeter plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and get an eight millimeter wrench, uh, pull that thing on there, get this line off, and then hopefully, once we go and apply pressure, you'll see this thing actually start to move. All right, so according to our directions here, now that we got all the cables and stuff laid out, know about where they're supposed to go, we're supposed to first extend the piston, uh, remove the shipping plug from the return line connector, which we did, attach an air line, to the connector and then using air pressure, extend the hydraulic cylinder um, and retaining plate. Do not exceed, here we go, do not exceed 50 PSI. So it's a good thing we didn't try that yet and we double check this. Um, if it does not move, use a pulling device such as a come along in order to go and extend the piston. If you see right here, I actually went and pulled the uh, pressure line as well. I think it was probably happening is as I was filling the uh, return over here with air, since it didn't have anywhere to go and balance the pressure, it just went and sucked the, uh, I don't know, a little rod assembly, whatever, um, that part of the actuator back in. I'm gonna hit it with air again and hopefully we can get it all the way out. Oh yeah. All right, so yes, I know this is upside down. Um, the reason will make sense here in a second. The directions recommend starting with cables A and cable C, all right? So what that's gonna look like, I'm gonna run the cable down around this pulley, down around this far pulley here, and then back to this position. Now I did look at this, and obviously we got the top down there. This is gonna come down through a couple pulleys here, but like, then there's this guy, this little cable guide. So I think I'm gonna to have to go and pull this off because otherwise, I mean, there's no way I'm gonna be able to go and fit the swedge through there and then run it through. Like, it's just doesn't make any sense. 
I'm gonna get to work on those two cables and I will pick you guys up here in just a second. So real quick, before you load your ramps, double check your slack locks. Basically what these are is if there winds up being any slack on the cable, this thing automatically locks down so it won't go down any farther. This one right here is engaged, all right? What they're supposed to look like is this right here. So this one's in, that one's good. You can wiggle it around, you can move it. There you go. Whereas this one, however, is uh, since it's engaged, I can't move that and I can't lift it up by myself because this right here is our power side. So having to break out the old uh, picker here, we're gonna lift this thing up real quick, get that slack lock disengaged, and then uh, get back to routing this cable. We got that there. So I'm gonna put the camera down, but what I'm gonna do is just push that out and then it's gonna go and rest on the actual primary lock like it's supposed to. And now you see, not only can you move it, but it also goes and sits back in there farther too. I gotta say, so far this lift install has been super easy. There are some big pieces that obviously go undertake a uh, good bit of finagling and everything like that. But everything else, I mean, it's super simple, bolts together. Um, as far as the cables and stuff though, let me show you what I did really quick. So this is our forward cable. I went ahead and attached it up there first. Ran it down here on the other side of the slack safety. Uh, I did need to go through and pull out both this uh, little roller guide right here. And then I also went and pulled this pulley out too. In order to do that, it's super simple. You just got this little E-clip right here. Then you go and tap that pin out a little bit. And then what you're gonna do, cause obviously this isn't gonna go and clear right here, but if you pop it out a little bit and then rotate it 180 degrees, it'll slide the rest of the way out. You can run your cable and then just take the pulley when you wrap the cable around it, stuff it back up in there, punch the pin back in, put a little roller guide back on, and then you come right down here to this guy. So this is the cylinder side, okay? So this is where the single pulley goes. Uh, you have this little pin right here and you just shove that up in there. And then this bolt actually goes and holds it in place. So once your pin and your pulley and everything are in there and your cable's routed right like this, just go ahead and tighten that down and that'll hold the pin up in there too. This specifically is what I'm talking about. So this is the other one. So once you get the cable and everything run, you got this little groove right here, this little lip, and then that bolt goes and sits right here on that, and then keeps it from falling down. After that, we got this cable run all the way down. And according to the diagram, this is the C cable right here. It runs from the power tower all the way here. So this one goes on bottom. So just wrap this right around here. Uh, same thing on this side. This one's just a double pulley though. So you got a little retaining bolt right up there. Um, and then you got C and you got A. Make it right. That's about it for the cable stuff though. I mean, that's honestly super simple. Um, pulling a couple things off, running the cables, hooking them up, easy peasy. So I'm gonna go ahead and bang out the other two and then I will pick you guys up here in just a few minutes. All right guys, one quick note on your cables here. Uh, you saw me before use the uh, silver plate here as a guide. Ultimately, they need to be attached to this piece right here. Okay, because this is actually, I mean, that's like, I don't know what, half inch, three quarters thick metal or something. Um, whereas that, I mean, you're just gonna shred that if you try to just use that. Um, but all the rest of these are nice and neat and pretty. Uh, so just make sure that whenever you go through and attach your cables, you attach it to this. It's got the same rubbery plastic material that's on the cross beams. Uh, so this is just gonna go and slide back and forth along this track here. All right, so far we got the cables ran, we got all the major stuff installed. Um, I'm gonna call it for tonight because it's midnight. So tomorrow I'm gonna to go and install the airline fittings. And then I also, <laughs> 
Apparently I need to go pick up some cable or something. Ben pack. I don't know what this is about, but this is like, what, four inches maybe of cable coming out of the side of this thing? Like, come on, man. So yeah, I'll get that done tomorrow and I will uh, pick you guys up here in just a few. And we're back. We're gonna jump right into installing the air lines as well as the hydraulic lines over here on the lift uh, motor thing, Bob, there we go. Comes with two different kinds of tubing, okay? Comes with this stuff right here, which is gonna be predominantly airline. It also says in the instructions to go and cut a piece of this uh, a certain length, and that's gonna be our return line as well. So we gotta go and make that. This right here is gonna be our, our uh, hydraulic pressure hose. And of course we got all our fittings right here. These three are gonna be for the airline, so it'll actually go and undo the locks. And these two are gonna be for our return line that we're gonna be making here in just a minute. This is how we're gonna be routing the lines, okay? So we got one, two, three T-fittings. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those positioned. Uh, start running a little bit of the tubing, just kinda of get it roughed up in the, in the approximate locations. I don't know how many of you guys like these fittings. I personally hate them just because it's really easy to over torque them and strip the threads and then they leak. And then if you don't do it tight enough, well then they leak too, so. These things have this like built-in plastic ferrule. Um, I'm really not a huge fan of these. I don't know, I might want to swap it out for some like 3AN braided stuff later on down the road, but for right now, let's at least get this thing up and running. All right, so after getting everything situated for the airlines, uh, I went ahead and decided to do the return line first, just cause it's shorter, figured why not. Uh, now, if you look at the instruction manual, this is not anything that's covered in the phone, unfortunately. There are different variations of the motor itself. Now, my initial thought was that since there's basically two red dots, uh, there's a red dot here and then there's this red plug here, I thought that maybe it was on the same side for both. It is not though, because if uh, you take a look at this, this is gonna be our fitting, our coupler. That's, uh, that's not, it, it's gonna be close, but it's definitely gonna be a size too small on there for sure. However, if we go and pull this guy out, then you can see this thing threads in there just perfectly. So just keep in mind, it's always better to go and double check this stuff than try to cut line prematurely and then you have to run out or something. So uh, definitely double check this. Uh, turns out mine did have it on opposite sides. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some Loctite on this guy and then we'll uh, get back to work with the return. All right, so we got all the airlines done. I gotta say, this is pretty much idiot proof. So just run it right through here. You got these nice little guide rails up underneath. T fitting number one, I gotta say doing this one because the fitting from here over to right about here, that's only about an eight or 10 inch line. So that one was a little rough, but that was probably the toughest part of this whole bit. So uh, comes over here, through here, completely underneath, all the way down to the other side and then it splits off down there. We got our pressure line right down here. This thing obviously runs all the way up. It's got a nice little track for itself too. And then it goes in loops around in through here. So pressure line, the return line, is gonna be this guy right here. Just goes to that. So this thing comes through the platform, round up this guy. This is gonna be our pressure port coming around up here to the other side. This is gonna be the pressure switch for the locks. So push on that, engages the pressure. Our feed is gonna be right up under here. I just haven't put a fitting on it yet. And this right around here is gonna be our return. If I do have any leaks, it's probably gonna be this one right here. This ferrule was pretty mangled because I actually go and ship them like inside this and kind of like snug it out down a bit and it was like practically flat. So I tried to just reshape it as much as possible. So, but yeah, I don't know. If I do have any leaks, it'll probably be this one most likely. Everything else is pretty good though. And unfortunately, while they do go and give you several feet of extra line, they don't give you any spare ferrules. So if you screw it up when you're installing it or if it gets mangled or something like that whenever they were packaging it, like mine did, um, it could be an issue. So just be aware of that. I'm probably gonna order some more in the future. Uh, hopefully it'll at least be good enough to get this thing up and running for right now um, so I can get a car on it. Next up, uh, we're gonna be going and making our power cable. I picked this stuff up over at Lowe's. Um, I'll put the part number right about here. Uh, just so if you guys want it, then you can go and get the same thing. This is 10.3 wire. It's rated to like 600 amps or something. So it uh, should be pretty good. One thing I did wanna do is get rid of this silly little pigtail right here. Um, and see what's behind here. Hopefully these are not soldered in and I can go and remove that whole thing and get a nice new fresh piece of cable. So, and there we go. This actually looks pretty good. I'm thinking I'll be able to go and pull this guy off uh, relatively quickly and easily. Feed this back through here. It looks like this uh, just goes to this little screw right here. And then these two 
pretty much lined right down here. So it should be pretty easy, a uh, little screw removal deal on the top of this box. And then I'll be able to go and thread in uh, some of this stuff after I screw it back a little bit. So uh, let's get to it. We'll show you guys the finished product here in a second. All right, so we went ahead and got the box back on there. I did wind up using a uh, three quarter inch clamp uh, for this guy right here, just because the bulkhead connector on the knockout wasn't the same uh, for the wiring stuff I used. Got everything connected back in here. This is reattached. And this right here is gonna be what the back of the plug look, looks like. So um, we got the two hots and then the ground. Um, and these are all labeled too, uh, right there. I don't know how well you can see that, but basically we got the uh, the white here, the black here, and then the uh, ground right up here up top. So got those all connected. Uh, next, I'm gonna be putting the back cap on here. We're gonna fill this up with fluid. I'm gonna go and attach my airline nozzle thing with Bob right there. And then we're gonna be able to go and run it up and down. The manual says to do it six times in order to bleed the system. And then I will show you guys how we go through and level it too. Now we got this back on and that is our completed power cord. Pretty cool. All right, so we got everything on and tightened down. I did go through the directions one last time just to make 100% sure uh, that I had everything good to go and I think it's all good. So it's a moment of truth now. Hopefully it works. Let's, uh, let's plug it in and find out. All right, here's nothing. So I wasn't expecting anything to go right away because obviously we just filled up our reservoir here. And this is a pretty sizable cylinder. I had this thing, if you look right here, it says min and max. I had this thing topped up to pretty much right about there. And right now it looks like the fluid level is pretty much to the uh, top of this sticker here. So I'm gonna go and throw some more ATF in here right quick, and then we'll give that another shot. All right, so we got this thing topped off now. Uh, I did wind up using the whole four gallons of this so far. We'll see if I need more or not, I'm not sure yet only because the volume of this thing is 3.6 gallons. I have no idea what the volume of the cylinder is and it didn't give it to me in the specs. So let's give it another shot, see what happens. Ooh, there it goes. That sounds pretty good. It actually sounds pretty close to level two. Um, <laughs> man, I'm freaking stoked right now. This is awesome. I've never had a lift before. This is hands down, far and away, the most expensive tool I have bought ever. So. I'm pumped. Uh, this thing does say that I'm supposed to go and raise it and lower it six times just to completely bleed the system, get all the air out. So I'm gonna get to that and then I will pick you guys up here in just a few minutes when I go to do the leveling uh, of all the locks. But right now, it sounded pretty good. All right, so now we got a system bled. It did take exactly four gallons. And right now with the, uh, the fluid in the cylinder as well as what's in the reservoir, I'm like right dead in between the, uh, the mid-max level. So it's absolutely perfect. Uh, now that we got that out of the way though, let's go ahead and jump into the leveling portion. All right, here we go. A few minutes later. So as far as the leveling goes, what you're gonna do is take something like a socket, okay, or anything where you can go and get equal distance and equal spacing, and then you're gonna go and place the socket right at the top of the ladder in between the top of the ladder and the end cap. Once you got all four of them pretty much equal, uh, you're gonna go and raise and lower the lift. Uh, after that, it's pretty much a game of guess and check. So um, at which point, you're gonna go and raise and lower uh, the ladder to go and shift the engagement points. Um, until they all engage pretty much simultaneously. It also really helps if you have a buddy or something go and stand in right in between the two that you're trying to calibrate at that particular moment, specifically because if you're in a garage or any enclosed space at all, uh, you're gonna obviously have sound bounce back and forth. So it really helps just having that one person stand in between the two posts. Uh, so they'll be able to go and tell you exactly which one was engaging first, which one was engaging second. And this is, this is the best way I figured out to do it. Uh, if anybody has any like tips or tricks or anything to go and get this done faster, more efficiently or better, let me know in the comments section below. I'll be sure to go and pin those just so everybody else can see them too. So that's basically what I did to go and get to this point. Um, I kind of got a little mentally involved in the work and forgot to actually go through and record it. Um, but it, it's super simple. And honestly, the entire installation process has been super simple. Uh, I don't want to call it idiot proof because I definitely think there's still some things that could get screwed up, especially just with the discrepancies uh, between the two different sets of directions. However, obviously knowing now what I know from installing it, um, it's awesome. Huge fan, amazing. 
definitely recommend it. So if you are in a situation like I am, where you've only got a two car garage and maybe you cannot upgrade or you're like me and you got to kind of squish down into something that doesn't quite work for you, uh, these things are awesome. Highly recommended. Um, obviously we got the turbo car right up here and the NA car right down here. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I really hope you guys liked it. I will be doing a follow-up and conclusion to this series, just kind of going through the cost breakdown for each of these items, uh, as well as like, you know, finishing the garage space, the lighting, whatever else, uh, just so you guys know. So that way, if you guys want to do something similar, you can, you know, the price breakdown, you know, the uh, cost savings between having somebody else do it versus you do it, uh, as well as kind of the time involvement and everything as well. So anyway, that is it. Be on the lookout for this video. If you guys did like this one, uh, please give it a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. I will see y'all very soon in the next one. Catch you next time.